What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Now, if you've been with me since the beginning, you know that pretty much how it all started with me was with animations and customizing the way Flipper Zero looked, at least from an interface standpoint. Literally, like, I think the first thing I actually ever really did to customize my flipper was to create a little stick fight animation that I thought came out pretty cool. Well, from there, the next step was to get rid of the top bar. That little ribbon thing drove me nuts. And Curanons was actually one of the people that figured out how to get rid of that. With the ribbon cable gone, I wanted to see if I could control some of the other top parts of it, so I found a really, really ugly way of deleting the SD card slot and the other stuff in the top left corner. But one thing I always wanted to do was try to figure out if custom fonts were possible. And way back in like December of 2022, eSurge actually figured out a proof of concept that showed that yeah, it was possible. Well, you can imagine how psyched I was when Willie from XFW hit me up literally this morning saying that he figured out exactly how to put custom fonts into asset packs. Now, XFW was the first firmware that figured out an easy way to switch between different wallpapers, different graphics, different pretty much everything. And now that they have fonts, you can pretty much customize every part of the appearance of Flipper through the XFW asset pack. Now, I love to see all the cool asset packs and really everything the community has to offer. So I want to show you guys exactly how to add your own custom fonts to XFW asset packs. This one's going to be fun. Let's get at it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a font that we're gonna use. Now, there are primary and secondary fonts when it comes to XFW. The primary fonts are basically the big titles on top of all the menus and things like that. And then the secondary fonts are the line items, like basically the things that you scroll through on the menu. Well, for today, we're gonna set the primary font. So we have really cool font to use for those headers. We're gonna go with a little bit chunkier font because A, I think it's gonna look really good. And then B, because it's for the headers, um, you don't have to worry about space constraints because the, the headers aren't quite as long. Sometimes when you have file names, things get kind of long. So let's pop on over the desktop and I'll kind of show you how to make it all happen. All right, here we are on our desktop and let's take a look at our font. So this one's called Thwack, which is actually the same font that I use for my Talking Sasquatch logo. So I thought it was fitting. So the first thing we have to do is to convert that font file into a BDF file, which is a file that we can use to turn into a .c file so that Flipper can read it. But before we do that, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Now, PCBWay is your one-stop shop for almost anything you need when it comes to creating. We have got some really cool projects coming up and we're gonna be using PCBWay to make those projects happen. PCBWay can help you design and create PCBs of almost any type. Well, now you've got a PCB, but say you need a screen or something for it, guess what? PCB's module store has got you covered. You've got a device, now it needs a case. Well, PCBWay can help you design and 3D print a case for almost anything. In a bit of a creative rut? Well, guess what? PCBWay's got pre-made projects that you can just select from. They have projects from handheld gaming devices, battery chargers, pet feeders, and more, just waiting to be made. So head on down to PCBWay.com and check out all the amazing resources they have for you. Thanks again for all the continued support from PCBWay, and let's get back at it. The easiest way to do this is with a OTF to BDF program, which I can actually run in Linux. So let's pop on over to my Kali VM, and we'll get that happening. All right, so let's load up our virtual machine right here. Do, do, give it a second, and hit play. And we're in Kali. We'll log in and get to work. Do a little housekeeping, close all the stuff I had open before. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take my file here and just drag it right over here. So I have thwack.ttf right there on the desktop because we're gonna work on everything directly from the desktop here. So we simply need an application called otf to bdf So all we'll do is open a terminal right here. And then we're just gonna do sudo apt install. It's already typed in there. OTF to BDF, BDF, enter, type in our password, and boom, there we go. That's already done. One of the nice things about Linux is it makes it really easy to install files sometimes. Now that we have our OTF to BDF converter, all we need to do is ask it to convert our font. So we're going to invoke it, OTF to BDF, and then we're going to do a resize. We're going to be minus R and make that 60. You can see I've already done this before. It kind of knows what we're doing. We're going to resize this font to 60% of its normal size. At 100%, it's too big and it doesn't show up right. So then we're going to set our output file, whoops, which is O. 
And it's going to be thwack.bdf, bdf. And then our input is thwack.ttf. Press enter, and if everything went well, here we have thwack.bdf. What we'll do from there is actually take this and drag this back over to our desktop. So now we have it in our Windows environment. And now we can close our Linux machine. Goodbye. Uh, let's suspend. All right, so now that we have thwack.bdf, our new font file, all we need to do is download a converter that will turn that into a usable font. So right here, if we search BDF converter, the first thing that shows up is a Unifont helper, which is exactly what we need. So let's go ahead and open that up and we're gonna download the Windows version right here. And we're gonna save that directly to my desktop. So save that here. And we don't need to have the parentheses one delete that and perfect save go ahead and close the browser actually let's move both of these into a folder to make life a little easier new folder squatchness whatever open that because then we can do whoops always opens in the wrong window and then just open cmd here now this is in an elevated command prompt so this already has administrator rights you can set that up pretty easily or you can just do cmd right click on it or go to run as administrator right there. Now this next command is a little long and I'll uh, write it down in the description down below, but basically this is how we convert the BDF file that we have into something we can use for the asset paths. So that's what this code looks like. Press enter, boom, 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 and everything seemed to be working correctly. And if we open up our folder right here, this is our squatch.c, absolutely fantastic. All right, so now that we have the file, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to clone the GitHub repository for XFW, the dev branch, so we can get the files that are already made in there and kind of use them as a template. Now, I know I've gone over this a bunch of times, but I'll show you again. We have the XFW GitHub open right here. We're gonna go to code right here. We're just gonna copy this, and then we'll open up GitHub, which I've already done, and then we can clone it. So you just go file, clone repository, and enter that in URL right here. I've already done this, so I've got it right here. And fetch origin, so this is already downloaded and everything's ready to go. You can see it's completely up to date. If you haven't done this yet, just do what I told you to do a second ago, and it's going to download it. It's going to be ready to go. We can close GitHub because we're done here. Okay, a little bit of housekeeping. And now I'm going to open up the file, file, the folder for XFW. Once we're in here, we're simply going to go to assets. And then we're going to go to packs. Whoops, there we go. And open up watchdogs. This is Willie's watchdog folder. And he's added a fonts folder to this. Really cool. And there's our font file. So I already went ahead and created an assets pack, which basically is effectively nothing. It's just a folder. And it just has to have the right folder name. So right now, anims right here. Those are all of my animations from my uh, Squatchware. And then we're just going to go ahead and copy this fonts folder right here. That should copy it. And then we're going to change this into here. Once we're here, I'm going to change this into primary instead of secondary because I want to be changing the primary fonts. I am A R Y, not the secondary fonts. Then we're just going to open this in Visual Studio C. There we go. And you can see this is actually what the font looks like. It's kind of cool to look at. This is an entire font file. So let's make this a little bigger. And then we're going to add the file that we already made to this. So all we're going to do is open up Squatchness here. And then we're going to open squatch.c. And it should look very similar. Here we go. And then I'm just going to copy all of this. Whoop, got way too far down here, but scroll down. It's going to copy all of this, control C. And we're going to paste over all of this, control V. And that's really all we have to do. Control S for save, and we can close that. So now we have in Squatchware, this is effectively straight up a asset pack already. So I'm going to copy this up here, copy my Squatchware asset pack. And where did XFW go? So many things. Here we go. XFW, we're going to paste that into the asset packs folder. And now all I have to do is compile this and I'll have my very own asset pack. Super, super cool. From here, all we really have to do is go down to the root folder, make sure nothing's selected, right click there, and then shift, right click, and then go to open PowerShell window here. And then all you have to do when you're in basically the root folder and in PowerShell, all you have to do is run dot slash FBT for flipper build tool, flash USB full, press enter. Make sure your flipper's plugged into USB-C, obviously, and make sure you don't have QFlipper running. But if all goes well, there we go. It's going to go ahead and start compiling. After these messages, we'll be right back. 
All right now, so our compiling's done and we just have to wait for the flipper to install. We're very close. So let's go ahead and close all this stuff because we don't need it anymore. And we can open up QFlipper and see what it looks like. All right, so let's load up QFlipper, shebang, and see what it looks like. Excellent. So all we have to do is navigate over to our extreme menu. Do, 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 where are we at here? Extreme. We're gonna open up interface, graphics, and then we can just change the asset path from default over to Squatchware. Click back, back, back. Reloading asset pack. Check it out. We've got our brand new font. That looks really cool. I like how that came out. I definitely might mess around with some different fonts and things in the future, but honestly, this came out really good. Now you can kind of see what I was saying as far as the secondary fonts. If I made these fonts with this, you know, the font that I made, it's going to be kind of chunky. And again, I think I can do better because, yeah, there's not very good line separation, but I think it's a great proof of concept and gives a really good idea of how to make this all work. And I love customizing Flipper. It's such a cool thing to do. And it's one of those things that honestly, it was really hard to figure out from day one. There was very little instruction from the actual devs on how to do any of this. I've literally wanted to have custom fonts on Flipper for a year now. I've been mean, checking out. This is how cool it is. Let's see if I can move side to side here. Oops, wrong side. Eh. Oh yeah, that's super cool. I'm very, very happy. Actually, it looks way better on the flipper itself. Sometimes QFlipper does weird stuff, but I'm actually pretty psyched on how that looks. Man, I'm also just really psyched to see some new flipper developments. I know it's been a little slow in the flipper sphere for a little bit. So thanks a lot to Willie for coming up with something really cool to show you guys. Now we have some really cool stuff coming up down the road. I'm just trying to get my hands on a Game Boy. If that gives you a little bit of a hint of what we're doing and some other stuff. So yeah, I'm excited for the future. If there's anything you want to see me cover, please let me know down in the comments down below. As always, like, comment, subscribe. You guys are absolutely awesome. We'll catch you next time.